you know, I actually want to talk about um, my motorcycle accidents uh, because I've been riding for. I got my license when I was 20 years old. I'm 30 years old now. I've been riding for 10 years. Um, and I've seen a lot, especially because when I, was, when I was in California, I didn't have a uh, car at all. I just had a motorcycle. Um, so I commuted on it. I got my groceries on it. I went on dates on it. Um, yeah, it's that's all I had. And so I got really used to riding on a motorcycle. Uh, in fact, I've been in two major motorcycle accidents in my life. Um, the first one was... When I was driving to work one morning, um, and I was driving on a road like this, where I'm going about 35 miles an hour, and it was a four-lane road exactly like this, actually, but it was in uh, Castro Valley in California, and I was <laughs> following too closely. There was a car that was in front of me. I was following probably like like that, maybe too closely. Um, and someone with a baby carriage, a freaking baby carriage, tried to run across the street. Um, and they, there was no crosswalk or anything like that. They just tried to run across the street with a baby carriage. Like, are you serious? So anyway, the car in front of me slammed on their brakes. I slammed on mine. I was, I had a piece of shit motorcycle at the time. It was like... It was like a Frankenstein monster. Like, the front end was from, like, a 1984 Kawasaki. And, like, the body was from, like, a Honda F2 from the mid-90s. It was just a... It was not a safe motorcycle. But anyway, I locked up the front. I did an endo right over the front. And did a somersault. Landed. Um, I think I hurt my wrist a little bit or something like that. But I, I managed to get up and to continue riding. And, uh, yeah, so that was my first accident. I was wearing full gear at the time. Um, I think my, the pants that I was wearing took a little bit of a beating, but they were okay for the most part. And I could work the rest of the day, even though I had a sore wrist. Um, the second major motorcycle accident happened a few years later as I was commuting on the freeway and I was lane splitting, which in California is legal, it's where you kind of go between the cars, and it was rush hour, so I was lane splitting, the traffic was going about maybe 30 miles an hour, and I was going uh, maybe 40 miles an hour, something like that, just between the cars, and the gap between the cars suddenly closed, um, and when it closed, I locked up my front brake. <laughs> you notice the theme here of my crashes. I locked up my front tire and um, I crashed. And as soon as I crashed, I immediately got up because I, I was scared that I was going to get run over. Um, and you know, right after I crashed, I was talking to the police officers and someone came up, someone who had seen the accident, said that a car had swerved into me on purpose. Um, you know, I don't know if that's the case or not. I told the officers that I didn't see it because honestly I didn't. Um, but either way, I crashed and I locked up my front. Uh, and the reason that happened was because I was riding on tires, actually kind of a lot like these tires. <laughs> Man, hopefully I need to learn through my lessons. Um, the tires were bald, or just, they didn't have very much grip. They were old, they are bald, they needed to be replaced like a thousand miles ago. And um, I had also made the mistake of overinflating my front tire and underinflating my rear tire. I'd gotten the PSIs mixed up for those two. And so because my front tire was overinflated, because it was bald, because I didn't apply proper panic braking, um, I hadn't practiced my panic braking really at all since my motorcycle safety course. Um, that's what caused me to lock up that front tire. And when I crashed, um, as soon as I, I fell, the interesting thing about the whole situation was it was kind of like I was in slow motion they talk about that people that survived trauma it was like in slow motion because I remember falling down crashing and trying to keep my head from scraping the pavement as I was sliding along the pavement 
And then I remember thinking very clearly, oh, I'm wearing a helmet. It doesn't matter. I can just relax. So I did. I just relaxed. I let my helmet just kind of scrape along the pavement. I'll show a picture of what, what it looks like. Um, and I managed to get up immediately so I didn't get run over. Thankfully, traffic had stopped. And uh, after traffic had stopped, um, someone kind of got out of the car and went down to help me. And um, after they went down to help me, uh, I asked them to kind of help me remove my, my motorcycle jacket because my shoulder was hurting. And he said, and I didn't, I didn't know this at the time, but um, my uh, right shoulder blade had been shattered, had been broken in a few different places. And the cops were super cool though. Someone had called the ambulance and they were like, hey, you look like you're fine. The ambulance is going to cost a lot. If you want, someone else can come pick you up. We'll get your motorcycle later. And uh, so I had my girlfriend come pick me up at the time. And, uh, yeah, as, as she, after she picked me up, about an hour had elapsed, and my shoulder started really hurting, so I was like, you know, I need to go to the ER, I think. Went to the Stanford Medical Clinic. Shout out to Stanford! And, um, yeah, that's when I found out I got some, I had some road rash, because my jacket had actually unzipped. Because I had actually, it's actually the same jacket that I'm wearing right now, um, the jacket had unzipped because I had replaced the primary zipper um, with, instead of having just a normal zipper on there, I had put a small key on there, like kind of an old school antique looking key, just because I thought it looked cool. But when I was sliding along the pavement, that key acted like an anchor and it caught on the pavement and... Uh, yeah, un unzip my jacket and I got a little bit of road rash. Uh, thankfully, it wasn't too bad. I don't even have a scar from it. Um, and yeah, so that was my major motorcycle accident. And, you know, I actually recorded a video right after that happened. I'll link to the video here. Um, I'll link to it in the description and I'll also kind of uh, put a link just kind of up in the annotation. Um, so you can kind of check out kind of what it was like.